Now I know what you were thinking before you even clicked on this video. Oh God, a video about CVs could not sound more boring. But it might come as a surprise to hear that this is probably the most important impression that you're gonna make on your employer. So it's probably worth sticking around. It's so unlike any other place that not only does the stuff that goes onto your CV uh, completely change, but the format of it goes completely out the window. So if you don't already have a correctly formatted CV, just start from a blank page. What often helps is to think about the person that's actually gonna be reading your CV. So imagine that you've just done the hardest week's work in your life and it's Friday evening and you wanna get out and you wanna to go to the pub, but before then you have to try and find someone to work on uh, Monday. So the person that's gonna be flying through uh, the pile of CVs is gonna be possibly the production manager. That person's gonna be looking for the perfectly formatted CV without necessarily caring about experience right away. So the key thing to getting this phone call from the production manager is that that person's gonna to be after these following pieces of information first. Your name! So obviously they want to know who they're going to be calling, so make sure that you put your name at the top of the CV and make it massive. What's your phone number? What city you're based in? What your job title is? Um, you're a runner even if you haven't done it before. And if you have a driving license, make sure that it's in this top part with all this other information. Next up is the super common mistake of people putting a paragraph which best describes them, usually called a profile. Uh, Sadly, I'm sure you're a wonderful person, but to be honest, employers don't want to be reading this straight away. What they actually want to do is to read about your most relevant experience. So make a subtitle, list all your relevant experience from newest project to oldest. Uh, things that they're going to want to know are going to include your role, when you worked on it, what company it was for, and what your responsibilities included. If you don't have any of this stuff, just go out there and make something. It doesn't really matter what it is, as long as it shows that you are keen and passionate about getting into the industry. So after you've got that stuff on your CV, the next thing to do is to put down any skills that you have. They'll want to know, are you first aid trained? What software you're familiar with, like After Effects or Photoshop or Final Cut? What cameras have you used before? Do you do you have any specialist knowledge, like being an IT whiz? Next is education. Uh, believe it or not, people in TV don't really care too much about this, thank God, otherwise I would have been out the door straight away. The best thing to do is just to list your A-levels if you have them and a degree if you have that. Don't worry too much about your GCSE results. They'll want to know where you studied, what you studied and what your results were. Finally, put down the names of any references that you might have. Now, personally, I don't put their contact information. I don't put their phone number or email or anything like that, mainly because I like to know who's going to be contacting them. Um, the chances are, because TV is such a small world anyway, they might already know each other. So there it is, your CV is now done. It's formatted for TV, which is good, so make sure that you start handing out to as many production companies as possible. Uh, so I will talk to you later. Uh, just before you do go, there are just a couple of things I want to mention. It's important, particularly in the early days of your career, to make sure that your entire CV fits onto one page. It just makes the life much easier of the person going through the CVs to find the right person for the job. And it also means that you don't waffle. Also, try and sound as professional as you can on paper. And what I mean by this is try not to crack any jokes. You might have an outstanding uh, sense of humour, but the person reading your CV might not, and it might actually blow up in your face. So it's just better not to put any jokes in there. Another common mistake I see is the curse of the creative CV. Ah! Okay, so basically I'm torn over this. I really like art and obviously I really like to see it when people do something differently. However, when I'm at work trying to find a piece of information like whether someone has a driving license or not and I can't find it easily, it drives me a little bit mental. I also think it shows a little bit of narrow-sightedness. Why? Well, firstly, how do you know the company that you're sending your CV to has a colour printer? Also, how much is it going to cost for them to print your CV out? Which leads me to my very final point, which is attention to detail. Now, I don't just mean uh, grammar and spelling, um, and I totally suck at that. I have to reread the stuff I write dozens of times until I get it right. But I also mean things like the font size is all the same, the style is the same, as well as the spacing. You don't want to have too many paragraphs all over the place which just aren't aligned properly. Right, I think that is possibly everything. Uh, if you do get stuck, just give me a quick tweet at Livermore and I'll see if I can help the best I can. Um, but for now, late potato.